We didn't do things that can change, really change the momentum of a football game. And, you know, eventually we did seize the momentum and, and kind of dominated the game. So um, I think this team has learned a lot. I think they've developed some pretty strong intangibles. We, we certainly have strong character on this football team. And uh, a lot of really good guys as well as good players. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to what's ahead. And I think the whole key right now is maintaining our focus. We can't have any distractions. And we got to stay focused, humble, and hungry. Is the top can, you expand, can you expand on that a little bit? Because you mentioned it on Thursday on your radio show that you were a little concerned that uh, during the week you maybe thought the team was half asleep, I think is the word you used. Yeah, well, um, was that know, a sometimes there's a fine line between reality and creating a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? You know, oh, they had a big win last week. I hope they don't have a letdown. And then you're looking for the letdown pretty soon. You're finding, oh, they're, we're having a letdown. <laughs> You know, and during the week, I thought we had a solid week of practice. And uh, while we've started games better, you know, it was a solid win. Todd and Matt. Kurt, uh, your running backs continue to be basically interchangeable and equally productive. Can you comment on their performance today? Yeah, that's been pretty much been the plan the last five years, six years I've been a head coach. And, uh, but, of course, it all starts up front with the O-line and the tight ends. But we have a lot of quality running backs, too. And I think the fact that we're balanced, you know, we can run and throw equally well, uh, helps the passing game and the running game. Matt, top is Sammy. Hey, Coach. Uh, it seems like I ask you this every week about Curtis Rourke. Uh, once again, really sharp today. You've had some really good quarterbacks in the past. How, how well is he playing this position right now for you guys? I think he's playing pretty well. Uh, he'll be the first to tell you he wasn't perfect. And, uh, you know, he came back from what I thought was a really outstanding performance against UCLA with a pretty solid performance today. Uh, but that's why we recruited him, too, because he had already proven himself on tape. And, uh, but I am extremely pleased to see the progress he's made uh, since we started playing games. Because, you know, ga the games are different than practice. And, and what I can tell you is, the last three or four quarterbacks we've taken have all been players a year in the conference, and they were all one-year starters. But they were like him. They had played somewhere else, played a lot of quarterback. They all struggle in the spring, and then they really start to get it in fall camp. So uh, I, I like where he's at. We've got to continue to protect him. Sam, we have top of the seven, you're right? Coach, you mentioned the depth at running back, but it also seems that there's somebody in the wide receiver room that steps up differently. There's somebody on defense, Jamari Sharp, with four pass breakups today, filling in for, for D'Angelo, and then Quinn Warren, a, ki a kicker. Does that speak to the character and just uniqueness of this team that it seems when somebody goes down or something is needed, somebody else steps up? Yeah, a little bit, but I mean, we're deeper at some positions than other. We're really deep at running back. We're really deep at receiver. We're not quite at as deep at Jamari's position. I was glad to see him have some success. But, you know, I think there's a lot of guys that were on the team last year that have really bought in. And we have, you know, we have great unity and character on this football team. Now, that's easier to have when you're having success. You know, we haven't really had a whole lot of adversity uh, since the season started. Uh, but when you do, it should make you stronger. Um, but. We've got depth at some spots, not so much in others. I was glad to see Sharp, because he's still a young guy, and he's progressing. Seth, and you're right, Zach. Kurt, maybe more from a process standpoint, week to week, like what's working, and with in-game adjustments, I guess what's working so well with Mike Shanahan's system and game plans that have allowed the offense to put up the numbers they have so far? Well, you know that one, you know that's my system, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> No, Mike, Mike calls them all, you know, and Tino and Bob and all those guys, and I'll interject once in a while. I, I just think it's, uh, you know, a real group effort, and uh, we're not afraid to throw something up there, and our guys are quick learners. We've got a lot of experienced players that learn, they, they understand football and can handle uh, a pretty heavy plate, and, uh, you know, if you can execute it, then you're, you're just going to put the defense in more conflict. Didn't even take that away from you. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> Coach, your team has only given up six points in the second half this season. I'm curious today, after the 14 points Charlotte scored in that first half, what was the message either from you, Bryant Haynes, or even somebody like Aiden Fisher in that locker room? At halftime? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, when we go in at halftime, 
I always have to, I always do a little interview on the field. So I get in there and the coaches are sort of huddled up in the coach's room. And I'll make my quick two or three points about uh, kind of big picture stuff. And then uh, coaches make their adjustments and then they grab their guys and I'm not with them when they do that. So, uh, but, you know, we did come out and dominate the second half. Uh, and, you know, going in, uh, one of the messages to the team was, look, that, uh, you know, they got players, uh, they're going to come out ready to play, but they do wear down. And I thought there was a point there where they wore down. Jimmy Fred and Daniel. Kurt, uh, your offense has scored on 29 of your 38 drives. Uh, you're averaging 50 points a game. The defense has only allowed 37 total points. And I know you have high expectations and still have those. And, and satisfaction is not in the coach's vernacular. But would, And you just became the first coach ever at IU to start 4-0. Would do you have considered that a good start at the beginning of the season? I think it's a pretty decent start. Daniel Lesson. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you, if you remember after week one, the way the second half went offensively, I don't recall you being overly thrilled with that. Uh, you guys scored like 77 after that, obviously last week. And now, when you guys were in that process of reflecting on week one to now, where do you feel like offensively you all have kind of evolved the most? Well, you know, we weren't pleased with that last quarter and a half of offense, penalties and uh, pressures on the quarterback. We were really behind the sticks uh, some bad down distances. The second game of the year, the, the opponent wasn't very good, but we played well, and I think that was good for our guys offensively. And uh, and we played real well against UCLA. So we got a lot of guys on offense that have played successful winning football, and uh, now they're you know taking it to the Big Ten. All right, thanks, Coach. Play Thank you. Great.